Welcome to part one of this series, the Roman Empire and the Holy Land. We're going to try and condense a lot of the information that's on the channel into this series. So if you'd like, if you, if you like learning at a slower pace, maybe it'd be best to watch the, the series locating the descendants of Noah, because we're going to try and move through the information quite quickly. So let's get started. We're going to start with the, with the work of Josephus. Josephus was a, a first century AD historian and we're dealing with the, the post-flood history so after the great flood of Noah and it says here how every nation was denominated from their first inhabitants so three sons of Noah Ham, Japheth and Shem we're starting with Shem and we starting with one of the sons of Shem called Aram and one of the sons of Aram called Misa or Misha and I've highlighted, highlighted this part here it says Misa the Messenians, it is now called Carax Bassini. So we get some extra information here that um, the son of Aram, Misa or Misha, living in this region of Carax Bassini. Now, if we go to Carax Bassini, we're going to try to see if we can follow this information to see if we can see where did the son of Aram go to. Okay, so Carax Bassinu. And what we have here is actually a description from Pliny the Elder he describes where this uh, where this town was it says the town of Carax is situated in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf from which projects the country called Arabia Felix so we've got some interesting information to try to follow but let's first look at where they say this kingdom was because if we go to the map now we see this part that's highlighted or shaded with color this is the kingdom it was known as Karakini. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But here we see a bit lower down the town Karak Spasinu. So Karak Spasinu was in this ancient kingdom Karakini. And now we've been told that this this kingdom was in this region in the country that we know as Iraq today. But we're going to try to follow the information to see where it takes us. So let's first think about Arabia Felix. Now this is also known as Happy Arabia or Fortunate Arabia or maybe even Fertile Arabia and if we go to a map we'll see it's this region here that we know actually as the country of Yemen let me show you on a map so get an idea of where we're looking okay so where my cursor is circling this country we call it Yemen but it was known in the ancient times as Arabia Felix so this is the first bit of information that we're following and we see now that it's taking us to this region towards Yemen and the countries we know as Ethiopia it's not bringing us towards the land we know as Iraq now the next thing I want to speak about is, is I, I think this is actually one of the most important um, or it could be one of the key parts to this if we actually go to the kingdom of Kar Karachini or Karakeni I'm not sure how you pronounce it we see here it was also known as Messin or Mesha. So that is where we see that name of the son of Aram, Misha. So we must remember that that's what we're speaking about now, trying to see where this son of Aram went to after the great flood. Now this is actually the larger kingdom, but this part here I think could be a key part of this, um, trying to see this picture. It says, the region itself became the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. Now we know the Erythraean Sea it's also been called the Red Sea, but we also know it as the as the Indian Ocean. So I want to show you this map that I'm working on, so we can try visualize what we um, what we're seeing. So we got Arabia Felix here towards the country we know as Yemen, and I've got here the Erythraean Sea because the Indian no the Indian Ocean is also known as what well, was known as the Erythraean Sea. So we can start to see it, this picture that's we um, that's emerging. We're trying to follow these details of Pliny the Elder, and it's bringing us into this region here. And you see, I've also got Erythrea in this region to, coming towards Ethiopia, because we still have a region. Let me show you on this map that we were looking at. You see this highlighted part here. It's quite small, but if you see where my cursor is circling, this region is known as Eritrea. So it's still carrying that name, Erythrea. So, if we're looking for the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea, would this not be 
you know, the first place that you'd consider when you have the Erythraean Sea in this region, and you've also still got a region that's carrying this name, Erythrea or Eritrea. And if you think about you know, where the information is taking us, you know, it's not taking us towards, let's say, to the Middle East or where the country we know as um, Iraq. Okay, now the next part that we need to think about is the Persian Gulf. Because if you, if you look for the Persian Gulf and you just go to the map, it's going to bring you to where we started here. You see, here's the, this is where we told the Persian Gulf is, and this is what the, you know, where they're saying this kingdom was. But I was in that first series. I was, I was asking the question, you know, should we not be looking for the Persian Gulf in this region, because then that would really make the picture come together. And I noticed that, what we know as the Red Sea, because we, you know, we call this today the Red Sea. In the maps, let me show you a few maps. It's actually also called the Arabian Gulf. You see here, the Arabian Gulf. And I'll show you another map. So we've got two maps to show it. See, look, the Arabian Gulf. So the Red Sea that we know today has also been called the Arabian Gulf. So is it not also possible that it could have been known as the Persian Gulf? And one of our viewers, the Door of L, been finding interesting information with this, uh, trying to connect the Red Sea to the to the Persian Gulf. Because if what we're looking at here with the Persian Gulf in this region, then this description of Ptolemy the Elder, it really seems to come together. Now if we just use the, the picture that we've created here and just do his um, description one more time. The town of Carax is situated in the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf from which projects the country called Arabia Felix. And you must also remember about the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. That's important. So we can see how the this country known as Arabia Felix, you know, could project from the innermost recess of the Persian Gulf, and it can be a part of the satrapy of the Erythraean Sea. So to me it looks like it could work and it could make sense. And the information seems to be bringing us here. So that's what we were thinking about for this son of Aram. So must remember that we're trying to follow the son of Aram. But now, I'd like to think about this like um, if you're setting up dominoes. We know that if you if you knock one num what if you knock one domino over, you know all the dominoes can fall. And I think this is very similar to what we do what we're dealing with here because we can see how the picture starts to change. That we're working in this region now for this kingdom, but it's different than what we've been presented with. And this can create a domino effect because we can see the other the other sons of Shem that's going to be impacted by this because if we go to back to the top here we can see places like Susa is connected with uh, with this kingdom and also Elam is going to be connected the brother of Aram you see here look Elamaeus is in a similar territory to this kingdom and that's the way they've got it here look Elimaeus nearby to Kar Karakini. So we can see that there's going to be a knock-on effect. And Pliny the Elder also speaks about the River Tigris. The River Tigris is going to be connected. So if we go back to our map, if we're looking for this kingdom in this region, it's going to impact where Elam was and also the River Tigris as well. So that's how, you know, trying to describe this domino effect that, you know, Following this information with this one sun is going to impact, you know, the rest of the picture. So I'd like to now think about Elam, the brother of Aram, son of Shem. And we're going to go to the Book of Jubilees because it's very interesting how it describes the um, how the land was divided, the, the three portions for the three sons, so Ham, Japheth, and Shem, but then dividing it amongst their grandchildren. So it gives us very interesting information. And we're going to read this part. It says. And fought for Elam and his sons to the east of the river Tigris. So we see how the Tigris is connected with the land of Elam. Till it approaches the east, the whole land of India. So this is the part I want to speak about because if we think about the, the country that we know, that we call India today, and then try to think about this picture we're working on, then you know Elam's not going to make sense to be in this region. So we had to um, do a bit more investigating, and I want to show show you quickly some things that we came across. So we've already spoken about Yemen. 
this country called Yemen that we saw is connected with Arabia Felix. But on this page it says something interesting. It says, Latin and Greek writers refer to ancient Yemen as India. So this is inter interesting because now, remember we're trying to think about the Romans and the Roman Empire. So that's what we're keeping in the back of our minds. How did they view the world, you know, in their time? And now we see that this part of, well, let's say this region of Yemen or Arabia Felix, you know, they refer to it as India in some sources. Okay, let's go to another one. Okay, this one, a confusion of Indias, Asian India and African India in the Byzantine sources. And I just want to read this part over here. Okay, so we over this side. Um, okay, we sp I'm going to read this part. So, Procopius reverts to the conventional association of his age in connecting India with Ethiopia when he states that the Nile River flowing out of India into Egypt divides that land into two parts as far as the sea. So I think this one's very important because now we're trying to imagine how the Romans are looking at this region that they're actually dividing it between Egypt and Ethiopia but they're referring to Ethiopia as India and then if you think about how that or the implications of that to the Romans you know maybe the Nile River or parts of this Nile River could be called the Indian River and I think that's where potentially a lot of confusion can come in so if we go back to this map I'd like to change this map now to um, to what we're speaking about now so give me a second to go back in history to um, so it's relevant to what we're speaking about with Elam now because we saw in the book of Jubilees that the land of India fell for Elam so we've got these sources speaking about Yemen being called India and now also regions of East Africa or Ethiopia being called India so it makes me wonder about this Indian Ocean that we know you know where is that name coming from is it you know because of the country we know as India today or could it be more about these about the, these regions that we're speaking about so the Book of Jubilees says that the whole land of India came for for Elam so now we're actually considering you know so far two sons of Shem following Elam and Ram and we're seeing connections with them in this region of you know, East Africa but you can see how I've also got Assyria on this map as well with a question mark now this is the, another son of Shem so a brother of Elam and a ram called Ashur and we found something interesting I want to do I want to show you because you know we're trying to see can we find some uh, some evidence to support this idea of these sons of Shem or the Shemites being on the continent of Africa and we came across this um, this work an Assyrian successor state in West Africa the ancestral kings of Kebi as ancient Near Eastern rulers now I'm not sure how you pronounce pronounce his name but I think it's I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Erkhlange very very um, interesting work that he um, discovered and was working on that we have we have these Assyrians so when the Assyrian Empire, you know, is collapsing, you know, what he's saying is that they, these refugees come to West Africa and they're having an influence on West Africa like the state of Kebi. And the time frame is 600 BC. So very interesting that we could have, if we go back to the map, Assyrians, so he describes them as Assyrian refugees, you know, at 600 BC in Africa. Now, isn't that very interesting because and I've got Kebi here. Now I'm just saying that's roughly maybe where, you know, where Kebi is in the state of Nigeria, just to show these Assyrians coming, you know, into West Africa. But I did ask in the series, the first series, is it possible that the Assyrians were always on the continent, that they weren't coming from the Middle East, like the way um, um, Dirk Lange was speaking about? But what if they were always on the continent? Would that not make more sense? That they they, they were coming, they were fleeing west, but from maybe from East Africa because if we go to the book of Jubilees and see what it says about Ashur if we just look at this part we can see that how it speaks about the territory of Ashur reaching the border of India and we've already been speaking about that can you see how that would actually make sense that you know the territory of Assyria or Ashur 
could reach the border of India, so that would be the land of Elam, his brother, and it could, could make sense for the Assyrians actually being on the continent. So that's what we were, what we were saying, or just asking the question. So that's why I've got it with a question mark. So this is the kind of the start of the picture that we're working on, and I think it's very interesting how how you can see how these dominoes are starting to fall, and just by following one sun, we're now starting to follow this information and it's starting to create a different picture. That's what I was trying to say in the previous video, that we, we're working with a different picture. You know, a different picture is emerging. And how is this going to influence the, the history and you know, how the Romans and the Greeks, you know, how do they see the world? And I just want to finish with one more point because there was something interesting with Elam while we're here. Notice how it says that, you know, that Elam has the whole land of India and the Red Sea on its coast. So that could be saying the Erythraean Sea. So that would make sense with what we've got here, that the, that the Erythraean Sea is on the coast of Elam. Now remember the Indian Ocean was also known as the Erythraean Sea. So we, so we can see how the picture actually works and fits the details um, so far with the Book of Jubilees. So I hope you have enjoyed this first video. We tried to go through it quite quickly. We've, um, we've just started to work on this picture now where we can see three of the sons of Shem that we can see that they, um, we've got some evidence and some information to support the idea that we should be looking for these suns in this region. And now that's starting to, uh, starting to affect the picture. And like we said earlier on in the video, if you knock one domino over, you know, all the dominoes can fall. So let's see what happens when we go into part two, what else we're going to, what we're gonna learn and discover. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.